admit it. You have more than once not gone in front of your sewing machine to sew because there's been some obstacle, some barrier, something that's put it in the too hard to start basket. I know because I do it myself, we all do it. And in this video, let's talk about the five most common sewing barriers that get in our way, but most importantly, some tools and strategies to help you get over these so you can just get in front of your sewing machine and get sewing. Hello and welcome back all my sewing friends. This is absolutely delightful to see you again as, as usual. Uh, if you are brand new here, welcome. My name is Evelyn Wood uh, and I'm the creator of VintageSewingSchool.com. Here on this channel, we focus everything on garment sewing so you can get better at making those garments of your dreams. So do hit the subscribe button if you haven't already because <laughs> I'm sure we have many, many more uh, content videos just for you. Uh, do check, YouTube likes to trick you sometimes. You might not be subscribed, so double check. We are talking about this, like the sewing barriers today. I This come up for me because uh, I was talking to some of my students in Vintage Sewing School and they were talking about the, I mean, they had the great ideas. This is where it sort of came from, is they had come up with some amazing ideas to stop those barriers from stopping them to get started sewing. We all know, you know, you want to sew that afternoon after work, after the day, and you're thinking about it, and, uh, but you have to pull out your machine and get it all ready. Mm, you don't really have that much time. Uh, you have to get all your things are in the other room, so you have to pull them all out. These barriers that just give us a mental block, that just mentally make it like too hard for us, put it in the too hard basket, so to say, to get started when I know you want to, because I know you want to sew those garments that you're dreaming of, and there's only one way to do it, and that is to actually get in front of your sewing machine. Starting is the hardest part. So let's talk about, there's five different main actual barriers, and then I've got multiple different points under those actual like barriers on how that might uh, work for you on how to like get rid of them basically. Everybody's different of course, so some might work for you, others might not. I wanna hear from you at the end of course to know yours, but let's go through the list. First barrier, setting up and packing up down your machine. <laughs> the If you have to, uh, not if you can't leave your sewing things out all the time or if they're put to the side and having to pack them all out and put them all away is a huge barrier. I know I used to have to do this at one point in my life. It is a huge barrier to getting started, but it doesn't have to be. So some tips on if this is your situation and you feel this barrier all the time, some of the strategies that might work for you maybe include keeping all of your sewing accessories, all of your bits and pieces, all the tools, everything in one large tub. So you can basically just take it from, you know, the cupboard or wherever it needs to go from our other room and put it out and bring it out. And it's all in one tub. Maybe um, I know some of my um, vintage sewing school members have put like you know, those hairdressing um, like things on wheels, you know, the stands they have with all the drawers, but it's on wheels. So you can just wheel it around. And again, all of your sewing stuff in that one place. So that is really easy to just get out and bring back. You're not like pulling out all the bits and trying to get them. That's hard. Think about maybe the one top thing that stops you. Maybe it is the carrying of your machine. Maybe it is all the bits and pieces. Maybe it is the ironing board. Think about the one biggest obstacle that gets in your mind that stops you and then work out or think of a way to actually streamline that particular part of the process of the pack up and pack down for you. You can also prep ahead of time. Maybe if you know that morning that you want to sew that afternoon before you go to work after. So before in the morning, prep it, get the sewing machine out, get your box out and at least put them on the, the kitchen table or even set it up. So when you get home, guess what? There are no obstacles. There are nothing in your way because it's already set up for you. And you could also actually time yourself. So set your timer um, You know, on your phone. Every phone has a timer, set your timer and actually set it and then pack up all, like get out all your things and set it up and then stop. And the same thing for pack down too. I bet, I bet it probably doesn't take as long as you think it does. Mentally, we think it probably takes 45 minutes to do this step and that's why it gets in the way. But actually, actual time is probably like four and a half minutes, really. So if you time it and then you know exactly that it only takes you actually four and a half minutes to pull out your things, 
it's kind of hard to use that as a, an excuse when you know it only takes that four minutes, not the 45 you think it does in your head. Next barrier, I think we'd all face this one, is finding the time. Uh, this is a big one with busy lives. We all lead busy lives and have lots of things. So I recommend all of my students, so you two, that you set yourself a sewing date. So book it in just as if you were going to a class that you had paid money for and you physically go to that class, book it in like you have that. Even though you're at home doing your own thing, book it on your schedule and that is your sewing time because that's the only way we get time is when you make time for it and you're way more likely to show up. Now also book that time in a schedule that works for you around your own schedule. Maybe you have 20 minutes in the evenings or an hour every Tuesday and Thursday, or maybe it is a four or five hour block on a Sunday afternoon. Work out what works for you in your schedule and then book it down. It could be lots of little sessions or one big chunk or a bit of both, but work it out, book it in, and then show up like you paid for a class for it. Can you replace another activity with sewing time instead? For example, maybe just one Netflix movie or TV series a week could be replaced with sewing time. So look at ways, is there something that you could give up? Because what you really want to do is sewing. And so just being conscious and trading that time off might be something that works out for you. Knowing what to do next, next or what is the next step? This can be a big barrier because if you're sort of unsure of what you're doing next, where you're at, what you're doing, it's hard to get started when that's the case, right? So uh, one of the tips I recommend is definitely don't uh, leave your, um, your project halfway through a step. So you don't want to do this halfway through a zip or halfway through something that's incomplete because it's really hard to do half and half. The on a pattern envelope where you see the boxes and the sections of things, they are really great natural dividers of little, little steps, little things like the zip is done, the hem is done, the collar is done, the sleeves are done. They're all little nice packages that make a really natural stop and start point in your garment making process. I absolutely recommend that you leave yourself a note. I used to and still do this all the time is leave yourself a note on the project. Literally write it out. What did you just finish and what are you doing next? So when you pick up your project, you can just read through and oh, that's right. Yes, I just unpicked this, 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 or I need to unpick this. I didn't, um, you know, get the right thread or whatever and leave yourself a note that makes sense for you. Uh, so it's just there with your project next time. I would also recommend to prep the next step before you finish. So if you are about to finish the next step, what can you do that will prepare you for when you start next time? Do you need to change the thread color on your machine? Do you need to wind a new bobbin? Do you need to pin even like half like fold up and iron and press something ready for sewing or get the zip all prepped and ready so it's just sewing when you start? How can you prep the next step so it's not like you know what it's going to be because you've already kind of got it ready. If you need to, to know where you're at and what you're doing, mark the pattern envelope with little, little arrows and dots and leave yourself so you know exactly where you're at and what you're doing next time. Before you finish, write out exactly what you're doing next time so you know it and it will no longer be a barrier. Another big barrier is what project to work on next. I think we all go through this one at times. And when you just kind of, you're, you're stuck, there's a big barrier if you just don't know what project that you actually want to make. So here I recommend keeping a folder of inspiration, be it Pinterest boards, something online, digital like that, or a physical cut out um, copies of things that you are inspired by. Keep all your patterns on hand or your top five patterns that you want to make, whatever, however your system is, but keep those inspirations out so you can be inspired all the time. And it might just help you get over that barrier when it's all out in front of you so you can see it. So you kind of really get to hone in on what you want to work on. And then I actually teach all of my students in vintage sewing school to create a mood board, to actually narrow down down those inspirations because often we just think 
all these different weird and wonderful things that we love, but how do we condense that down to be really specific to a theme, a look, a feel of, of what we want to make, be it just a single piece or several pieces? Uh, condensing your inspiration down to be very specific via a mood board or anything else is very helpful. And the next tip I can give you is uh, to list out, write them out, the top, you know, five, six, if it has to be 10 to start with, things that you want to make, uh, be it either because you need it in your wardrobe uh, to wear or you just inspired and you just want to make it. So list out your top five or six is probably best uh, that you want to make. And then what you do, list it down to the top two or maybe four, break it down even further. Out of that one, what are the most, you know, the top two or four, maybe pick one of like, and then go down again to just one or two. What is the most, the item that you want most in your wardrobe and what do you just want to make? And then from there, you've really narrowed it down so you can then choose your project a little bit more wisely so you can see what will be the most appropriate uh, for you or what you're most inspired to start making. So narrowing it down, sort of get a larger pool, then narrow it down further and then narrow it down further is really helpful. There is a one big barrier and that is that you're scared of the next step or scared that you'll muck it up. Basically you'll mess it up. This is uh, I think a big one that we all go through. Don't worry. You are absolutely not alone in this one. This barrier, like you just don't get started because you're scared of messing it up. I know, I know how, I know it, the feeling, absolutely. So what I used to do, and this is what I, again, teach all my students in Vigi Sewing School, and I've talked about it here many, many times, is that then my strategy for you would be to say that your next step is to actually make it a practice one. So either make a toile or a mock-up as a full garment to practice everything because the second time you make something, it is a thousand times better. It's not even a complete ratio, like one to one. You make it twice as, you make it twice, it should be twice as good. It's a thousand times better the second time you make it. We all know this. So make it your next, um, whether a whole garment practice or you're just practicing that individual step, make that your next thing. Just do a practice zip, just do a practice hem. Whatever it is that you're working on that you're a bit scared of mucking up or just practice sewing with the fabric if it's the fabric entirely that you're scared of practice it. This goes if it's just your uh, a particular thing or you just think the whole thing is above your skill level. Either one works great and I promise that that fear will just dissolve because the first one you're doing is meant to be the practice one. So that barrier will be lifted when you don't have that fear anymore. Something really nice that you can do is uh, leave yourself a little note on your sewing machine. So maybe under your cover. So when you lift it up, you've got a little note there for yourself that is, well, you pick something that works for you, but maybe it's just something simple like you're doing great. Maybe it's mistakes are part of the process, smiley face. Maybe it's just something like you've got this. You're on your way to being the most brilliant sewist that like you dream of whatever little motivational note that you need. So if you are, have that barrier and you look at your machine, you look, get to your space and you're still like, mm, I'm going to mess it up. You've got that little note, that little words of wisdom from earlier you, you can thank for to give you that, maybe that pep talk to just get you over that hurdle, that barrier and get yourself in front of the sewing machine sewing so you can start making those garments that you dream of, because that's what I want you to do. So my friends, I really hope you uh, got some tips and tricks, uh, like ideas from this list. I would absolutely want to hear from you down below. And I know everyone else watching this does as well. What are your best tips? What are your strategies? What works for you to get over like the barriers of sewing? What are, because we all have different barriers and by leaving those comments, someone else might just pick up a tip and you'll probably help someone else get rid of their barriers and get them sewing further. So leave those comments, like all the ones that you like and let them know that you enjoyed that comment as well. And it was helpful. I thank you very, very much for watching. As always, there's links down below as well in the description box to a bunch of things that I think you'll like. Um, and if you ever want to come join me at Vintage Sewing School and take your sewing to the next level, I've left those links down there below as well. Okay. Happy sewing, my friends. Until next time. Bye.